Hey everybody, it's Patrick. It's after work. And, um, what is it right now? It's like September 20-something at the 25th, 24th, I don't know, it's a Wednesday. And, um, had our, excuse me, got some bumps. I'm uh, just leaving a really nice little beach community. Uh, one of the, one of the interesting locales I get to visit in the course of my work day. And, um, haven't done one of these for a while. Uh, I've had, um, I don't know, a lot of stress in my personal life, a lot of crises and things like that. And um, I've actually withdrawn from school temporarily, um, or withdrew from this class anyway, because um, there were all these like really easy assignments that I couldn't work up the motivation to work on um, that you know only would have been like a really little bit of work. But um, when everything was getting hectic, I just you know let the stuff pile up and up and up, and, and then just. You know the thought of uh, the thought of sitting down to work on these insultingly easy assignments was uh, just made me seize up. You know, I was uh, I don't know terrified almost of uh, these assignments. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I think it was just time to take a break from school. Um, so um, I'm no longer on track to graduate by uh, the beginning of the summer uh, with my masters, but. Um, you know, that's not a big deal. I mean, one of the reasons I picked uh, this particular format, you know, of the online education and the um, six, eight week sessions per year and things like that was because it allows the flexibility to uh, to take some time off. Um, you know, skip a six week, uh, you know, skip a couple of months here and there and then come back at it fresh later. And um, it was, uh, you know, just one of those things where everything got really hectic and difficult to deal with after the class had started. But uh, fortunately, I'm still within the ad drop period for this class, so um, all I have to do is send a form to student services, and um, and then uh, they'll be able to pull me out with just a W in my transcript instead of a failing grade. So that's good. A little silver lining there. I have to give some credit to student services at uh, Sacred Heart University because... Um, because they were really proactive about reaching out to me and you know asking me what was going on and stuff like that and of course I didn't share with them what was going on but I appreciated you know their advice to uh, you know withdraw and I did try to talk to the professor but apparently there's because um, all I really needed was like another week to catch up on assignments um, there's like a paper I had to finish and stuff and this is the first time I've heard of this but my instructor wrote back and uh, said that there's a strict policy in our university that you know, when you do have a personal crisis of some kind and you need an extension, you need to provide a note from either a clergy, a supervisor at work, or um, you know, a doctor or a therapist or whatever. And um, you know, I wrote back and told her that that wasn't possible in these circumstances, so I'm going to withdraw from the class. And, um, so I'm really going to hate taking this class over again because it is really. Uh, really kind of boring um, and very easy um, very very little bit of writing but I just got sick of doing those things so maybe a break is all for the best take a different class uh, before coming back to this one uh, this one again which was um, assessment of families it was a family assessment class so it was mostly you know stuff that the social workers are doing you know the Calgary uh, family assessment model and um, you know, the community assessment stuff I, I really got already in public health nursing, so, I mean, a lot of it was a retread, and um, I just wasn't in the, the right frame of mind to, like, sit down and do it. But, um, yeah, and I had a whole week off from work last week, too, and I just you know, couldn't force myself to work on it even then. Um, but, um, I don't know, now that I'm back to work after my vacation, I actually feel a little better about things than I did when I was on vacation. Um, mainly because I have something to do right now. Um, but um, I'm happy to be back at work. And uh, we just had a team meeting today with uh, our uh, very entertaining medical director. Um, always nice to have some, some witty bavarde, some back and forth, uh, really intelligent guy. Um, and uh, I got to take an LPN student out with me today, um, which was a lot of fun and really made me feel a lot better. Um, you know, give me a, a busy caseload and, uh, you know, an intelligent, interested nursing student to follow me around and uh, really improves my outlook on life, uh, for the day at least. Um, I'm 
I'm uh, getting done a little bit early with my visit. It's only about 3.30 right now. Um, but I've got some paperwork to do when I get home, of course. We just got new computers. Um, we've actually gone back to the way we did our computers uh, right when I first got hired, um, you know, about three years ago. Uh, you know, the nurses all have laptops, and um, you have to connect them to a VPN to update their records, you know. Um, but the advantage is you don't need to be connected to the internet all the time, so you can get your work done if you are in a beach community, like I just was in, and not have to worry about crappy cell phone service. Um, but then the downside is, uh, when you're done, you have to get it to a secure internet connection, and then uh, synchronize, what they call replicate, uh, you synchronize the records between uh, your laptop and the office. But uh, the laptops themselves don't come with any productivity software installed, probably because we can't afford the licenses to, you know, because they charge outrageous fees for those things to get Excel and Word and stuff on your computer. Uh, but thankfully, they left uh, me just enough access to the laptop to install OpenOffice, which is a product that I much prefer. Um, so I'm just starting to configure the laptop the way that I like it. I've s s uh, steadfastly refused any agency equipment up until this point, you know, because before, you know, so after that they switched to the remote desktop, which I think I've talked about before, and with the remote desktop, um, you're just remotely connecting to a work computer, and then there's nothing to replicate or synchronize, but the advantage, the disadvantage is you need a stable internet connection the whole time you're working, and you, know, you don't always have that. Um, so, uh, the remote desktop is still there, but that's where the office productivity software is, and then there's two different versions of our EMR, a mobile version and a production version. So there's really three different versions of our EMR that I have to connect to in like a rotating fashion. Like while I'm replicating in the office, I switch from mobile to productive, and then if I need office productivity software, I have to run the remote desktop. So I would actually have three copies of our EHR software up on my laptop at the same time that are exactly the same interface, the same product, Suncoast. And um, so, you know, I've traded one problem for like three other problems, but you know, that's, that's how it goes with uh, IT and the healthcare profession, you know. Where, like, you know, you solve one problem, like six more pop up. Um, but I can chart at the bedside without walking around the room with my MiFi card, you know, testing in all the windows. Um, so my visits are going a lot more smoothly, there's less frustration from my computer not working while I'm at the bedside. That's not to say that that doesn't still happen. I've had, you know, three major errors or crashes or whatever since Monday um, when, uh, when they gave me this laptop. So now I have a superfluous laptop. I have a laptop that I don't really use for anything um, except for listening to podcasts as I'm going to sleep. Um, but uh, yeah, today really reminded me what a big uh, impact on how I feel about my work having a student makes. I don't know if I said that right. Um, but, um, I don't know, I, I, I like, you know, talk more about my work and, uh, you know, why I think it's important and, you know, pitfalls that I see other people get into and then uh, having a student along with me, I get, you know, the benefit of being criticized, you know, I, even, even in a sort of offhanded or sly way. Um, I like, you know, people to ask questions about what I'm doing and to be critical, and um, that's a really important thing to any professional, not just nurses, but, you know, lawyers and teachers and, um, you know, anybody that has a profession that you could learn something new about every day and still call yourself a beginner, you know, um, which really isn't the case with the technician, you know, level jobs. Um, you know, part of being a professional is being able to give and receive criticism in a productive way, you know, in the way that it's intended. And um, a lot of people can't do this, and a lot of people um, have this association in their heads with, you know, criticism equals bad, or criticism is a bad thing, or criticism is something that somebody does when they don't like you, or they want you to go away, they criticize you. And that's, I guess, how it is for some people in, like, you know, their memories of their childhood or their relationships or their home life. They may have, you know, been raised in environments where uh, criticism just isn't allowed. And that, um, you know, it'd be interesting to look at what kind of jobs those people have and see if there's any correlation. Um, but, um, you know, in the 
nursing profession like other professions. Uh, you know, criticism is like a normal, healthy part of that process. And when we're driving around alone, you know, by ourselves, uh, when we do get feedback or criticism, it's often by way of you know third or even fourth parties um, from you know uh, get to getting its way back to you. You know, the full loop around. So, um, you know, students are really some of the best teachers because of the questions they ask. You know, a, a good student is worth just as much to me as a good teacher um, because it gives me a chance to reflect on my own practice and uh, the decisions that I make in my own practice of nursing and, um, and how I deal with different situations is very valuable. And um, so uh, I hope I get more students. I think my supervisor noticed I liked... Um, taking nursing students around, not just because they're young and female, but because of the reasons that I just mentioned. And, um, and I do feel a lot better about my work uh, when I've had a student for half of the day, you know, or something like that. It's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, so maybe next week I'll have a student again. Maybe I can get them on camera uh, like I did with our Orient last video that I uploaded. That was a lot of fun. But um, I think they told us that they're not supposed to drive in the car with us. I'll have to double check on that. It might have something to do with um, like liability and workman's comp, something like that. Uh, but we'll see. If, uh, if I can get somebody else on camera so it's not just me talking into my cell phone every time, then I will do it. We'll have after work nursing ride-alongs. Maybe I'll pick up a co-worker and then do more... Uh, person, you know, dialogue. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what else to talk about. Uh, I'm not sure anything... Yeah, I mean, I had a really good talk with a nursing student today about pain and symptom management, uh, partially because I have a presentation coming up where I'm going to present on pain and symptom management, like uh, regular watchers will know. I do uh, uh, a lecture on pain and symptom management uh, for the hospital nurses or anybody else who wants to come, really, but mainly for one of our two uh, regional hospitals, um, twice a year, and um, that was, you know, one of those other things adding to my stress. I had overdue assignments for school in the midst of a personal crisis, and then I've got this, um, you know, presentation that I have to do professionally that I really like doing, but I get really nervous about it because, um, I don't know, you know, various things, you know, I'm like getting up in front of a room of people that are, you know, probably mostly more experienced than me, and uh, I'm lecturing to them, and, you know, the only lecture aid that I have right now is PowerPoint, and I have the PowerPoint that I've used for the last two years, and I make some small adjustments and stuff, but I really want to just ditch the PowerPoint and, you know, whip something up in Prezi, or, you know, find something a little more interactive than just showing people PowerPoint slides. Um, I actually got feedback the last uh, presentation that I did. Um, of uh, somebody wrote on the feedback form, obviously not a PowerPoint person, and uh, I, I, very, I wear that with pride. I wish I kept the form. I, I am not a PowerPoint person. And um, I was just talking to the nursing student about this earlier. There's a lot of research that suggests that uh, PowerPoint presentations are not an effective way to teach people things, you know, because um, people are going to be reading the slides instead of listening to you. Uh, ideally, I would convert all of the slides to, um, you know, just one-word sentences or pictures of things. Uh, but that's hard to do with pain management because a lot of what I'm talking about is really abstract. You know, it's about the principles of pain management, not so much like the physiology of pain, which, you know, probably would benefit from some illustrations and some bullet points and things like that, because uh, it's a lot of material. But um, that's really not what we're interested in. What are the barriers to effective pain management, or you know, uh, what are people's cultural beliefs about pain management, or you know, the ethics of pain management, or um, how do you assess pain and things like that? And um, there's a couple of things that you could use visual aids for, but um, it's really more of a kind of a didactic thing. And um, but I've got really good feedback uh, previous years, and um, something that our hospital liaison said to me that made me feel really good last year was that um, in the hospital that she works at, or that she's our liaison for, she had a bunch of nurses come up to her and ask her for my business card, which I thought was really nice. Uh, but we're not um, we're not provisioned with business cards, or, or we're given we were given provision cards during our rebranding, but they didn't have our individual names and numbers on it. It was just. Um, 
just the agency number. Um, so I asked a couple of people about personalized business cards, um, but maybe they want to limit my networking. They want me to network too much. Um, I did go uh, recently, actually, to like an after-hours uh, mark uh, networking thing at work, and it started off as um, you know I got an invitation to attend from um, you know our you know, um, I forget what her title is, community development director. Um, and it was emailed to all of us an invitation to join or to come and visit this function for the women's networking group. And um, you know, because of some professional issues I've had lately, I and I was in a bad mood that day, and I wrote back, you know, something to the effect of like, "Why are you inviting me to a women's networking group? Where's the men's networking group?" And she's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I should have said it's you know it's a uh, men and women. Right? Everybody's welcome. And, you know." Can I, you know, so I'll see you on Monday then. I couldn't back out then, you know, I said, yes, yes, of course, of course, I will go. And I really did have a very good time. Uh, it was really interesting. I got to hang out with some of our own volunteers who are all very interesting people. You know, anybody who volunteers for this kind of work are, you know, some pretty awesome people right off the bat. And um, got to talk to, uh, like, a bank executive and uh, a couple of the ambulance company folks, you know, one of the paramedics. And, uh... I really did have a good time uh, doing it, so I should try to do more of those uh, after-work extracurricular uh, kind of things, but you know, it's hard to do when there's so many other obligations, especially school. Um, no, home again, home again, huh? This is the place. Home sweet home. Well, that's about it, and um, I'll try to do this again, like maybe next week. Team day seems to be the day that I'm able to talk at the camera. It's kind of hard on other days, um, but um, yeah, I'll see you around sometime. <laughs>